really cool, it's really powerful, and you're going to want to use it. That's the simple takeaway on it. Um, it's easy to set up. It, uh, what, you're, what you're probably going to find is that uh, understanding the concepts takes a few minutes here, and then once we understand the concepts, it'll be pretty clear. The, uh, the thing that you want to do is try and figure out where these terms are going to come from, these equivalent terms. So you might want to send around a spreadsheet to various department leaders to find out what are the, what are the synonymous terms that you want to have users looking up. Or you can turn to the advanced search reporting to see which search re requests the users are running and what kind of documents they're selecting when they do run those searches. So uh, query expansion automatically expands search terms to include other terms. Users run the search once, and they get all these other terms added in automatically. Uh, there are two types, contextual and non-contextual. The contextual analyzes the meaning of the, ex the, the term that you're using. So it looks at the other surrounding words to determine what you really mean. If you enter in latest Apple, we're not going to go looking for fruit. We're going to go looking for products from Apple. Okay? Um, and this contextual search is it's part of the secret algorithms in Google, uh, from in Google. We take the original Google.com list that gets generated on our corporate our, our worldwide uh, public search engine and then we scrub it and use it for the GSA. So um, it's something. It's a, it's a it's a uh, it's a series of analyses that you can't really get access into. Uh, you can't see it. You can't find it. You can't download it. You can't inspect it. It just gets run automatically. Then there's the non-contextual, which is simple replacement, no analysis. So if you run a search for Apple, then we may all you could also include the term fruit or banana, whatever you want to search for. And it's just it, the the contextual has, uh, it'll be referred to as the standard expansion in the search appliance. So when you select standard, you're saying, I want to have contextual search running. And you can turn it off if you don't want to have it run. Um, if you're finding you're getting unpredictable results, things you don't want, then you can go ahead and turn it off. And it's referred to as the standard. Um, there have to be at least two words in the query because we're going to take one word and compare it to the context of the other words that are near it. So you have to have at least two words to work with. It includes some stems. It includes uh, uh, the looking of the context and its meaning. Now the local expansion is referred to as the non-contextual, simple replacement. And there are two types of local expansion. There's the pre-configured or custom expansion files that are already uploaded. They're in seven different languages. They're installed in the GSA. You can enable them or disable them if you want. You can download them and look at them. But what you're going to find is they're simple replacements. And it's a list like Apple, Apples, um, Run, Ran, Running, you know, um, various different stems on them. Generic. Generic. So, so what is pretty much generic. Yeah, it's pretty much generic. In fact, we can go ahead and take a look at one of these in just a minute. Well, let's do it now. Um, so we go to serving. Go to query settings. Let's expand this a little bit. Let's go to query settings. Oh, let's shrink it up a little bit for display purposes. Here's the seven default local expansion files that Google provides out of the box. And it looks like there's quite a few other query expansions that have been added here. I probably need to do a little cleanup. You can enable them or disable. By default, the only one that's going to be enabled will be English. And you just click on this disable link if you want to disable it. If you want to download it, take a look at it. Click on download. When we open it up. And there's simple expansion lists. Right. Abbott, Abbott's, Abby, Abby's. A lot of plurals in here. Uh, you, you know, singular and, and, and plural forms of the words. You'll also see ver common verbs get um, get their. Ger you have the gerund version, the past tense. Okay. 
you can modify this if you want, and then re-upload it and enable it. You can take it as an example. What you'll see is that the format is a curly brace and a comma separated list and a closed brace. All these terms within the braces get uh, our equivalent terms. So if user runs um, abstainers, the search term will always also run abstainer. What we don't show here, the um, slide converter didn't generate uh, these, didn't properly convert these strings here. There should be an equal sign here, um, an equal sign here, and a greater than sign here. You can use the greater than, so you can add these as one entry per line if you want. Um, if you put a greater than symbol, it'll be a one-way direction. So video disc would, would uh, also be replaced with DVD, but DVD would not be replaced with video disc. So you can do a one-way mapping if you want. I was just describing the two different types of, of ty uh, types of lists you can upload. One is a synonym list. Those are words to expand. You can also have a black list, which is words that you do not want to expand. So if, if Chrome were a word to be expanded to uh, shiny or metal, but it's really your internal product and you, want it to own, you don't want it to be expanded, you could enter that in as a, a one word per line and that says do not expand these terms. It's important uh, to specify UTF-8 encoding for your diacritics to work. When you go to upload a file, you'll select it here, give it a name, which will show up in the list. Click Upload. It will upload the file, check it for syntax, make sure it's correct, and then you can apply the settings. So just remember you have to click Upload and then apply settings to bring it into the list. And you may have to select Enable on it to make sure that it becomes active. I think by default it will automatically enable it. There's an additional setting that you have to use to turn on the types of query <laughs> expansion that you want to by front end. Per user group, meaning per front end here, you can turn on the various types of query expansion. None, standard, which is the contextual, or the local, which is the non-contextual, or full, which means both. What you cannot do is specify a query expansion file per front end. That's a common request. Oh, and the entqr parameter, which can be used as a search query parameter, a search parameter, in the URL string, if, if you use entqr, it will override uh, what you set on the front end. And you can look in your search request to see if the entqr parameter is set. I think sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't. Note that the results may vary, so you want to, because of the contextual kind of hidden secret sauce algorithms there, you may see results come up that you didn't expect. Like you might enter in guitar player and might get guitar lessons as a, as a search result. And so you may have to do a little bit of testing and experimenting with it. The limits on it, the following limits apply. The, each file of your expanded terms can be limited to 30 megabytes. If you need more than 30 megabytes worth of, a file, worth of expansions, you can create another uh, query expansion file and upload another file. Maximum number of terms in an expansion is set to 100. The appliance will warn about performance issues at about 32. So the, you have 32 terms across that are equivalent, it's probably better to break them up into multiple lines. Uh, 100 files for 6.8 and earlier, and if you're at 6.10 or higher, you can upload 300 of these query expansion files. Query expansion does take a toll on performance, so if you are seeing a, a slower search response, this might be one of the causes. If you have too many search terms per, uh, per line, or if you have too many query expansion files.